What up YouTube, I hope you're enjoying the weekend. I know it's been a while. Um, here in the UK the weather's quite uh, debatable. It's It's got its own mind, so it's raining and next it's sunny and next it's raining and then it's sunny and so on. So yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a funky weekend I should say. Um, but in today's video I wanted to be talking about Kubernetes, which is a automated deployment for containerized applications. Um, and really this is gonna be mainly at my subscribers who are developers and <laughs> my cat in the background. <laughs> uh, but mainly, yeah, for, it's going to be aimed at developers as well as people who are developers who are not subscribed to me. So if you haven't subscribed to me, subscribe to me. Um, but I hope you enjoy this video. So before I go into detail about Kubernetes uh, practically and the component I'm going to be looking at, which is the dashboard, I just wanted to do a quick overview of why I'm doing it. So in my career, I'm a platform engineer at Compel Market. Um, and we're currently building a PaaS, which is powered by Kubernetes and a few other features. Um, and we're trying to build a cool developer experience. So for me, it's a brand new area. I'm learning it. I'm using my spare time and my work time to, to learn and evolve and understand Kubernetes and its components behind it so that I can build this cool PaaS for developers first Kubernetes video, um, the first episode of many to come hopefully, um, I wanted to focus on the main overview of things. So I'm going to use the Kubernetes dashboard which is a, which is a user interface um, that allows you to manage your Kubernetes cluster. So I'm running a cluster on GKE, so that's Google's container engine, um, which I got free um, a free trial of because they gave me free credits. So if you are interested in doing that, then I suggest you hit up the Google Container Engine and get your free credits and register up and then build up a cluster. But today we're going to practically go through Kubernetes, look at the dashboard that's currently there, upgrade it to v1.6.3, um, and then show the features that um, v1.6.3 has. So I've already got this all set up so I can talk to my cluster from my machine. Um, uh, a good friend of mine, uh, his name's Dan Murphy, created an open repository that allows you to, it's called the Cube, Kubernetes 101 and it allows you to basically spin up a, a cluster in GKE and then set up your machine so that you can um, talk to it like I'm going to. So I'll post the links below uh, for the information for that so that you guys, if you're interested in playing with Kubernetes, um, I'll have a link so that you guys can have a look and, and have a little play. So anyway, um, kubectl, which is the, uh, the controller, the binary tool that is used for Kubernetes. So what we're going to do is we're going to list all the pods. Now, because I've already got the command and the IntelliSense already previously saved, I'm just going to skip all that and just press enter. Cool. So these are the running pods. Pods are containers. Um, so these are the current pods that are running in my GKE cluster. And as you can see, there's one there which I have the Kubernetes dashboard running. So because of this, I can then proxy to the port that's running for Kubernetes dashboard, which will be port 8080. So what it will do is it will try and tunnel in, start server traffic on my local host on port 8080 to the cluster. Cool, so this is the Kubernetes API server. As you can see, the UI is running there. So I can say slash UI, and there it is. This is the Kubernetes dashboard. Cool. So unfortunately for me, I can't upgrade the dashboard to 1.6.3. In GKE, it looks like um, you have to upgrade the cluster, um, which would then pull potentially the, the late change for the dashboard. In my case, I've just upgraded to um, one point, what about go to? One point seven point two um, for the master and for the nodes. Um, but it looks like in this case, um, GKE looks like it wants to pull down one point six point one for Kubernetes for the dashboard. Um, upgrade was seamless, cool, awesome. Shame about not being able to upgrade the dashboard. It's one of those things that. Even if I physically enforced it to happen to upgrade the dashboard um, and get it running, GKE would still 
realize that there's a change in the system and then terminate that pod and pull back the original which would be 1.6.1 .1. so in this video then what we're going to do is we're going to show you 1.6.1 .1, and then eventually when 1.6.3 is out I will show the latest changes for that but for now let's go through the dashboard and 1.6.1 .1, do a uh, deployment with helm um, to do a little example of how quick a deployment is uh, and what the dashboard can do when a deployment has happened so showing the pods and logs and replica sets scaling etc so let's do that so again the api server and then the ui cool so what we're going to do then so this is the dashboard quickly just to have an overview these are the list of namespaces um nodes so how many nodes i've got i currently have just one node um any volume so storage roles for our back um daemon sets deployment so any deployments that will go in there so example in cube system namespace you'll have the deployments such as kubernetes dashboard heapster tiller tiller is basically the pod that helm uses to talk to in terms of doing the deployments um, and all these little deployments basically work together to form uh, or well not to form but they help kubernetes in general to do things like scaling deployments um, gathering metrics for cpu usage or memory usage on a pod those type of things um, jobs again jobs is like cron jobs so basically you could um, do something like backup every 30 minutes, backup every hour, restore a certain pod every 30 minutes. Although I don't know why you wouldn't want to do that, but one, one of those type of things. Um, and then the pods. So basically, again, pods are containers. Um, this gives you the list of uh, running pods. So here you can see that I've got an example. There's the dashboard. I can look at the dashboard. Um, and see how much CPU usage is taken, um, the memory usage, the details about it, so the name of the pod, the namespace it's in, um, and the image and the version of the image, so the image tag, any environment variables if uh, a pod has them, so things like secrets um, and the commands and the arguments that are used, if there's any. Um, in this case it also gives you the condition so you can see if the pod was initialized if it's ready and if it's scheduled um, and who is it created by so again like replica sets which I was talking about earlier so in this case there's a replica set for the kubernetes dashboard now i'm just having a, a quick overview basically about what these things will do but in other episodes i will go more into detail about what the specific types of different workloads do. So what does a deployment do? What does a replica set do? Um, stateful sets, replication controllers, those type of things. Um, so as you can see, each page is pretty much um, specifically for the different things. So ingress is basically the URL of your, like, your pod. So for example, you could have something like simply z dot um, k8 dot test.cluster.io for an example and that would basically take that URL and Kubernetes would handle it and the service and the ingress would route it through to the correct pod um, and then display back whatever is you're displaying back like a React app or a Node app or whatever it is you've got running in that pod for example. Um, the services that are behind it so basically the services allocate a cluster IP which is an internal IP inside the cluster um, and an internal endpoint um, and that basically allows services to talk to each other internally or I think also from an external point of view um, config maps and secrets so config maps can hold data so things like nginx templating for me an example is I hold an nginx template that has certain changes in it for buckets and things so therefore I want to create um, a template that holds that data and changes it when I deploy like the nginx ingress for example um, and it's the same with secrets if you hold secrets this is the place where secrets are, are held um, and then are used eventually with a deployment for a pod
to give an example then of the power of the dashboard um, we're going to deploy uh, an example service onto the cluster using helm and helm is basically uh, a package manager that manages kubernetes charts so there's a good website called kubeapps that have a whole load of open sourced um, charts for kubernetes and in our case we're going to use ghost so I'm going to use this command helm install stable ghost which will pull down the stable repository um, of ghost and um, deploy it onto the cluster. So the idea of what happened uh, is happening now is helm is going to talk to the tillapod which is running on the cluster send a load of information of the stuff it wants to do so in our case it wants to create a new name a new pod or release name called wandering macaw um, when it's deployed the namespace is going to be in and the status along with that the resources so such as the deployment the secret the config map the persistent volume claim and the service so um, what will happen is now is that's now happened it's now deployed onto the cluster the cluster will then start processing that information so what we'll do then is if we proxy into port 8080 again for the dashboard um, we can see then that we have a deployment here which when you think about it the deployment actually took probably about uh, at least five to ten seconds to actually send that information across to the cluster um, and spin up a pod in our case as you can see here we have a deployment that started at 47 seconds ago and yeah it's not ready yet because there's some issues around persistent volume claims um, so if we for refresh the page when it loads if it loads actually that is cool that took a while that was must be my internet anyway as you can see here deployment there's a green tick which means it's deployed successfully the image came up a minute ago and we can look at it so we can see there's been a new deployment new replica set uh, a new pods running um, along with um, so the environment variables password user password etc um, database etc so in here Right now, as you can see, is of information um, logs from MariaDB, um, and on top of that, you can find the services as well for the pods. So, what we're going to do then is uh, just to give you an overview of what this can do. You can see it says there's pods one of one. I want to scale it up. Assuming I can scale it here, I want to set it to three pods. So that's going to then scale it up to three containers. As you can see now, it says there's three, one out of three pods ready. The new replica set is then going to initialize and create those new pods running. So as an overview, you can see that these new pods are now pending, um, and eventually they will come green and be ready um, to use. So. I don't really care about this service, this is just an example of um, the things that it can do um, and what the dashboard can do. So in our case what we're going to do now is we're going to kill off this um, service because we don't want it running on my cluster and taking up resources. So we're going to use helm list and helm list again will talk to the cluster, Tiller will then give the list back of the releases and we're going to want to delete that release now because we don't want it running on the cluster. So we can do a helm delete and we want to purge it um, and the release name. And so what that will do is we'll send the command to delete that release and that will kill off the deployment, the service, the replica set and the pods, etc. So then if we go back to our dashboard, um, you can see that now nothing exists on that dashboard in terms of the pod that I had just created. Oh, actually, saying that, the deployment is there, but it's it's left one pod running. Or, oh, no, it's gone now. Cool. All right, that's gone. Sweet. Cool. So I hope you um, got a good overview of how the dashboard works in Kubernetes. Um, it's a shame I couldn't get it to upgrade to 1.6.3 because I really wanted to 
um, showed some of the latest changes that 1.6.3 has, but at least it was only like two minor versions out. So um, I'm going to be doing more of these Kubernetes videos. Um, um, it will be really around the things that I learn about Kubernetes, uh, things like building a cluster or um, how, what does Kubernetes do with etcd and uh, the masters, the workers, vault, etc. Um, and really what I want to do in, in these episodes is what I learn, I want you guys to, to know and learn and understand. So as always guys, I'll be posting the links below um, with all the information you need for building a cluster um, and Dan Murphy's Cube 101 so that you can get a cluster working GKE and to talk to it um, from your local machine with kubectl or helm. Um, on top of that, um, if you've got any opinions, any comments that you'd like to share with me or any learnings that I that I might find interesting around Kubernetes, then please share them in the comment section below. And as always, guys, if you haven't subscribed, then please hit the subscribe button and subscribe to me and give me that thumbs up. As always, guys, thanks for watching. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Peace.